All right, in this, in this word problem, we want to examine what happens whenever an object is launched into the air. Now, I tell you that the height was measured in, measured in feet, and we're measuring it uh, how, however many seconds after it's been launched. So it's given by this formula. Let me just write this a little bit larger for you. So that's negative 16t squared plus 84t plus 301. Now, this is equal to the height, but we want to know specifically when will the object be 400 feet above the ground. So that means when will this expression for height equal 400? And what you see is that we have something here that's quadratic. So let's get everything to one side and zero on the other and see what we can do with this. So if I subtract the 400 to the other side, I end up with negative 16 t squared plus 84t. This gives me negative 99 is equal to zero. Now I'm going to tell you something right now. This guy does not factor. You could use the quadratic formula, and that's really what you should use. Uh, but if you're going to do that, it's best if this guy is not a negative. So if we just divide everything by negative 1, it'll be easier to plug these numbers in, and we have less of an issue with our signs. So just divide everything by negative 1, and we get this. So you see that your a would be 16, your b equals negative 84, and your c equals 99. So those are the values that you'd plug into the quadratic formula to get your solutions. It, and I'll tell you right now, it's going to be ugly, it's going to be nasty, but you know what? We do have the graphing calculator, so let's see what this guy can do for us. Okay, So let's bring this guy on board. Now, what we're doing here is trying to figure out where does this guy, this equation, now where does it equal zero? Uh, remember, we can go to math, and go to the solver and see what we come up with here. Now the original equation was negative 16. Now instead of using t, I'm just going to write x because the calculator doesn't really care. It's just a variable. So negative 16x squared plus 84x plus 301, but then we had to subtract the 400 over. Okay, You're probably saying, why don't you just write minus 99? I'm just showing you that this is how we end up setting it equal to zero, and we just let the calculator do the work. You never know, you may have made a mistake, you might have said that's 101. I know, silly, but it happens. So I want to solve this guy, so if I do alpha solve, I come up with 1.786. Tell you what, let's just round that to two decimal points. So this is t, remember, so t is approximately 1.79 seconds. So what that says is that just under two seconds from the time that we launch this object up into the air, it's going to be 400 feet above the ground. Now when we look at the, the equation that we have here, in the original equation, this negative 16 deals with the, um, the, f uh, the force of gravity, the acceleration due to gravity, so negative 32 feet per second squared, but in the formula you have to divide that by 2. This 84 relates to the velocity, the initial velocity, which is 84 feet per second. And 301 means you had an initial height of 301 feet above the ground. So we're saying that in about 1.79 seconds, we've reached 400 feet. Well, let's see how that looks whenever I graph that. So if I go to y equals and I graph this, I've got negative 16. There we go. Negative 16x squared plus 84x plus 301. For the other equation, I have y equals 400. I want to see where do these guys intersect. So, wait a minute. What? See, now we've got an issue. I think it's pretty clear what the issue is. My graphing window goes from negative 10 to 10 in both the x and the y direction. And that doesn't really help me out because I'm talking about a y value of 400. So we go to window, and we're going to change this. Now, the x value is corresponding to the t value that we have here, which is time. That's your independent variable. So the minimum time is going to be 0, because we're not talking about negative time. And let's go out to you know, a time of 10. That sounds good. Now your y min and y max, your y values are your height. So the minimum height is going to be 0. Let's say the maximum height is 450. Let's do a y scale of 50 to see what that looks like. Remember, y scale means 
how many units each a check mark represents on the axes. So now let's graph this and see what happens. Okay, there's the negative 16 t squared and then there's the 400. So if you look closely here, you see that you have two intersection points. So I found 1.79 seconds, but there's another one. Let's see if we can figure out what that is. Let's go back to the solver menu where we were. And we said we solved it for where x was equal to 0 before, and we got 1.79. Let's solve it at 10. Let's see what happens. Well, if we come from 10, then the first solution, the closest solution we have, is about 3.46 seconds. Going back to the graph, you see how this makes sense. Because not only do you hit 400 once going up, but a second time on the way down. So that's why you have two solutions here for this equation. These are incredibly nasty answers, not something you would have gotten from factoring. But we do get it from the quadratic formula or using the solver menu here on the graphing calculator.